A Courant by J.S. Bach. This one arranged by David Blackwell from Bach's first cello suite. And this is taken from Piano Mix 3, published by the ABRSM. Let's first of all listen to it, and then I'll tell you a bit more about it. But straight off the bat, and thank you very much to Richard for asking for this uh, video lesson on this piece. He asked for three specific things to look at. That's fingering, playing in a Baroque style, and the ornament at the end specifically. So we will certainly cover those three things, as well as some other details too. But as I said, let's start by hearing it through. I think David Blackwell has produced a really good piano piece here out of what was originally a cello piece. And I'll link the cello music in the description below. But I'm, I'm not going to go into comparing the two here. You could do that for yourself a little bit and see how the piano arrangement has come out of the cello original. So no, now let's work it through nice and steadily. I quite like a little finger swap at the beginning. The first note is an upbeat. So it just helps me to Bounce off the first one and put a different finger down, thumb, first beat of the bar, slightly accented, all makes sense in my thinking, but you can leave the thumb there too. Now the first few bars of what David Blackwell's written here is exactly the same, just taken straight out of the Bach original. That right hand part is an octave lower, so the original deliberately to play that articulationlessly, but that's all one line. But David Blackwell very, I think, brilliantly tells us no, that those little notes are a bass part and there's a melody. And when you hear cellists play it, they play it like that. Articulation is going to be really key. Holding on to that G because it's tuned. See articulation before the beat. And taking care for that thumb just to overlap for a moment with. Let's keep going. Bar four. So these left hand accompaniment chords. Again, David Blackwell's written them as quavers with a rest, and that's what we want. They're not super short but they are just separated, aren't they? Each one has its full value, but each one is separated from the next one. And that's a, a great sort of Baroque accompaniment style with this bouncy running melody over the top. And this is where you will start to do compare the cello original. You can see what um, the arranger's doing here, how he's changing the original. first cadence, clearly a perfect cadence, isn't, isn't it? Chord five, going to chord one in our home key of G major. That's the end of our first section. David Blackwell's written us a little crescendo in bar four. Yes, do it because we're on the piano, so that we have a sense of arrival at bar five. Let's listen to those first eight bars. Slightly slower. <laughs> A 
I notice that those quavers, I'm also slightly separating them. I'm not playing similarly in the right hand. For me, that's working. That's the, the Brock style that I think is gonna sound good. Could we play it smoothly or everything? It, it doesn't sound, sound right to me somehow. So keep going with that detached style. From bar eight, we have this scale run coming down and Bach plays with this uh, a lot. We see these little scale passages throughout here now. And this section is slightly trickier, isn't it? We need to work out what's going on. Should we do it hands together, but steadily? One, two. So the thumb on that D is crucial in the left hand so that we've got enough fingers going to get up to the A. Meanwhile, in the right hand, I would just walk straight up to the fifth finger on the F sharp. But you could do a cheeky thumb under. That kind of thing if you wanted, but easier I think. Let's go from bar eight. That scale one, two. Again a little crescendo to this very pretty section. Scale coming down, so I would definitely have the fifth finger on the top. And that left hand again from bar 11, just as before, it's written in. Play the notes nice and confidently, give them their full value, but separate each one. And those left hand notes. Not playing super smooth there. But the chord sequence there is very, very pretty, isn't it? I think in bar 11 we're hearing a sort of E7 sound, which goes to A around the circle of fourth, which goes to D, to G, and you could keep going. Bach doesn't do that. He takes us out of that, that circle before too long. Um, that's what's happening from bar 11. And then from bar 14, we've tucked down to piano. Gradually growing. Now there's a lot in there. Again, and a little scale we can see in the left hand there, as we talked about before. And we get this bouncy dotted rhythm up here. This is the very first time in bar 16. Let's just think through the right hand bar 16. And then that scale melody. That A is part of it, do you agree? That's all one single line, but the A is taken in the left hand. Um, and combining that dotted rhythm with what's going on the left hand is tricky. You almost certainly want to go, I suspect, nice and steadily through that section. Should we go from 16? One more time. I'm, I could just drill that for a bit taking a beat at a time, arriving on the next beat. Am I together, second finger with the A? And let's go through to the start of the next beat. Let's go through now to the start of the next bar. I won't do this forever, don't worry. <laughs> 
Well, that kind of practice breaking it up might be very helpful. It's a coordination thing, getting both hands to work together there that's tricky, I think. And then David Blackwell brings us back to the original material to wrap it up. He's given a, a wonderful structure to the piece. Poco writ. Poco writ, slow down a little bit and quiet arrival there. Not a, not a big blast ending, a more subdued. Notice I'm leaning a little bit on those bass notes. I think those bass notes are very, very important. Um, there's a recording on YouTube of Michel Maisky playing these pieces on the cello, and he really digs in to the bass notes. I'll, I'll link it down below. <laughs> that kind of thing. Again, a crescendo is natural. You have to grow there, don't you? It's implied. Now that ornament at the end. So the first thing I'd want to do is to play it without the ornament at all, just to get familiar with the basic notes. Now, on that penultimate note, on that F sharp, I'm now going to add an appoggiatura. Appoggiatura is when you play the note, usually above, and you lean from that note to the correct note. So we get that lovely, that lean, that sigh. Here it is one more time. So now it's just one more step to go from to So this mordant, think of it like an appoggiatura, like a sigh. And take your time with it. So there's a sense of arrival at the end. So Richard, thank you very much indeed for asking me to take a look at this piece. Really well constructed, I think, arrangement by David Blackwell from the book Piano Mix, Volume 3, published by ABRSM. And uh, good luck with your music practice. If you have any further questions on this piece, please don't hesitate to get back to me. Take care. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>